let me just confirm. Yes, all tasks on the checklist are complete. Traveler, Paimon, we are grateful for your assistance. <laughs> it was no problem at all. Thank goodness you were able to come as soon as we contacted you. Who knows how we would have coped with all these commissions otherwise. I was nothing. The last couple of days have been pretty busy, but it was all super easy stuff, like delivering and escorting goods. When we heard that you were short on people, we thought we were going to be in for another long and drawn-out adventure. <laughs> Being the seasoned adventurers that you are, it's true that you are suited to work of a much higher caliber than your recent assignments. However, this situation is unavoidable in Mondstadt at this time of year. Huh? Why is that? Probably because it's harvest season? That's right. This is the ideal season for harvesting crops and fruits. And for the wine capital of Tavat, it's also the all-important winemaking season. Farmers are anxious to sell off their fresh produce, and all the major wine merchants are seeking to purchase top-quality ingredients to make new product. Ah, well, no wonder we keep hearing people talking about wine these days. <laughs> huh? What do you mean? Seriously? What, what? What? What's up? Yes, I swear I'm not making this up. The acting grandmaster wants everyone to gather at headquarters in the main hall. Hurry! We need to leave right now or we'll be late. Hey, w wait up! Well, they're in a hurry. Uh, why do those two knights <gasps> look so flustered? Kaya! <laughs> well, hello there. If it isn't the Traveler and Paimon. What a rare pleasure. <laughs> it's good to see you too. Kaya! Just the person we need! Um, why is everyone running off to the Knights of Favonius headquarters all of a sudden? And is our help required too? <laughs> Don't worry. This isn't one of those occasions where you need to come to everyone's rescue. All that's happened is that the Knights of Favonius have just received a letter from the Grand Master. Acting Grandmaster Jean will be convening a meeting in the main hall shortly to go through it. Whew. Well, that's a relief. Wait, hold on a second. What did you say again? The Knights of Favonius received a letter from the Grand Master? The Grand Master of the Knights of Favonius? That's... isn't that Varka? The leader of that legendary expedition? Yep. So... What did Varka say in the letter? How's the expedition going? When are they getting back? Oh my god, Paimon, calm down. Oh, so interested in our Grand Master all of a sudden? Never knew you were such a gossip. <laughs> it's only normal, isn't it? That you'd be curious too if there was someone you'd heard loads about but never met. Even Master Jean says he's a living legend. Oh, pretty hard not to get hyped up after hearing that. The expedition has been going on for ages, and we still never heard a single thing about what they're up to. <laughs> the acting Grandmaster is very gracious in her appraisal. Varka brought quite a bit of trouble to those around him on the road to becoming a legend. I'll have to tell you about it sometime. Oh, please do. Anyway, since this has piqued your interest, why don't you join me at headquarters, and we'll see what the letter says. Yeah! We do miss our honorary knights after all. Aww. It's been quite a long time since your last visit. Oh, it's been way too long. Sure! Let's go and see what it's all about. Bye, Catherine! See you soon! Alright. Take care now. Bye! It looks like just about everyone's here. Hey there, cutie. Paimon, I didn't know you two would be coming. So you heard about the letter? Uh, yes, we did. Yep, we ran into Kaya near the Adventurer's Guild. Oh, wow. Paimon's never seen so many people in the main hall at once before. Oh, Paimon's getting kind of nervous now. <laughs> Don't get too carried away, all right? 
If I know the Grand Master, the fact that he has the time to be writing letters means it's probably nothing serious. It certainly won't be bad news. I'm still very wary. <laughs> Who knows if it's bad news? Kaya's exaggerating a little, but otherwise I agree. Okay... Maybe it's good news after all. After all, Mika's not the kind of person who'd be able to keep it hidden if something were the matter. The truth would be written all over his face. Mika? <laughs> Who's that? Over there, look. The kid standing next ah! to Dean in front of the staircase. Oh my god, he's so cute. <laughs> he used to be a land surveyor in Eula's team. He's very talented in what he does, and a very reliable person. When the expedition team set out, the Grand Master appointed him to be the core member of the frontline team. He's the one that brought back the letter. Oh. Please, may I have your attention, everyone? Now that we're all here, let's begin reading out the letter from the Grand Master. <clears throat> Mika, please, go ahead. Y yes Master Jean. Oh, no! He reminds me of a chocobo. <laughs> Right. <clears throat> Hello, everybody. I am Mika, surveyor of the Reconnaissance Company. Uh, recently, I have been taking part in an assignment with the expedition team. I will now be reading Grandmaster Varka's letter aloud for you all. You can do it, Mika! <clears throat> to the Knights of Favonius. Greetings, everyone. This is Varka. The first thing I want to say to you all is please put your minds at ease. The expedition is safe and all of its members are accounted for. Oh, that's fantastic news. Mm. <sighs> My palms are sweating. <sighs> um... May I continue? Yes, go ahead, sweet little boy. Go ahead, Mika. All right. Now that your fears are allayed, I trust you'll be ready to listen to the rest of my letter. I'm writing to you from the northernmost reaches of Tevat by the light of a stove. The expedition forces are stationed here while we restock. I once told you that the purpose of this expedition was related to a dangerous secret from days long past. I am still unable to disclose more than this, but suffice to say that you needn't worry about how our mission is progressing. In the past couple of months, we received an unexpected visitor. The Fatui Harbinger known as the Captain. What? I'm sorry, what? Uh, the captain? Jesus! I am fully aware of the Fatui's outrageous actions in Mondstadt in recent history. Nevertheless, the captain was not hostile towards us on this occasion. Open parenthesis. I rather suspect that's because this time, Snezhnaya and we are in the same boat. Close parenthesis. Oh? The man hides everything under the mask he wears, so no one can know his past or his origins. However, one thing is for sure. He is as hard as iron for having the courage to challenge gods as an ordinary mortal. I don't doubt that he could even take out a ruin guard by stabbing it in its big, glowing eye with one of Klee's crayons. Open parenthesis, don't get any ideas. <laughs> Close parenthesis. Our scouts have confirmed that the captain received orders to head for Natlon three days ago. We'll be able to sleep much better now that we don't need to worry about him anymore. I will admit that some of his actions have helped us, but even then he owed us at least that much. This year's Vinelaza Fest must be kicking off in Mondstadt any day now. What a great pity that this year, once again, 
we will be unable to spend the festival together. Everyone here is always thinking back fondly upon the fine wines of Mondstadt, as well as the happy times we have spent with each and every one of you. I hope that you and all the citizens of Mondstadt enjoy the festival to the fullest. Have a few drinks on our behalf. The Dawn Winery's limited edition Vine Laser Fest seasonal special will do nicely. May Lord Barbados bless Mondstadt, and may the wind carry our sentiments back to your side. Varka. P.S. If you're wondering who's tougher between me and the captain, well, I'm the Grand Master. There are ten captains in the Knights of Favonius, but only one Grand Master. Ah, ha, 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 ha. His left, not mine. <laughs> the letter ends here. Thank you, everyone, for your attention. <laughs> Thank you, Mika. Master Jean, um, I just noticed that there's something else written on the back of the last page. Oh? <clears throat> P.P.S. I ran out of paper, so I'll add this here. Lisa, the following is a message for you. Uh, oh, uh, this part seems to be from the Grand Master to Miss Lisa. Oh, for me? Oh. Uh, seeing that it's a special message, Lisa, we'll discuss this in private. Everyone, as the Grand Master mentioned in his letter, the Vinlesa Fest is in just a few days. And how fortunate we are at this time to receive word that all is well with the expedition. Though they are unable to return to Mondstadt and spend the festival with us, the Vinlesa Fest will nonetheless be a major event that all of Mondstadt is looking forward to. I hope that everyone will guard your stations and perform your duties, both for our far-flung colleagues involved in the expedition, and also for the hard-working people of Mondstadt. And of course, during your time off, I hope you will be able to rest, relax, and enjoy this long-awaited festival. That brings our meeting to a close. Dismissed. Did Paimon hear that right? They ran into the Fatui's captain? Hmm... Who knows what that was about, but it must have been important. Yeah. But, uh, Fatui Shmatui, the real big deal here is ah. the Vine Lisa Fest. Sounds like there'll be loads of free food and drink. Paimon wants to hear more. <laughs> Typical Paimon. Hi, cuties. How about we go and chat with Jean? You didn't get a chance to say a proper hello with so many people here. Well, let's go. Oh, what are you guys up to? Uh, uh, hi there. Um, you must be looking for Captain Kaya? Please, don't mind me. Actually, I was looking for you. I just wanted to say hi. Uh, wait, but what? Oh, jeez, Captain Kaya, well, what should I say? Oh. <laughs> oh, Mika, how have you not changed one bit after being on the front line this long? You were just asking me about the Storm Terror incident, weren't you? Well, allow me to introduce you to the legendary Honorary Knight. Hello. That's right, and also the legendary Paimon. <laughs> Hi there. You guys are so strong. I'm... I'm in awe. Um... I have to go and report in with Captain Eula now. Please excuse me. <laughs> it's okay. Go on. Oh boy. <laughs> he just left! Well, that's too bad. Paimon was gonna ask him all about the expedition. That is a pity. It really is. But don't take it the wrong way. 
The way he sees it, every pair of eyes in Mondstadt is focused squarely on you. Give it some time, and this will all sort itself out. Next time you see him, I'm sure he'll get along just fine. I hope so. In fact, let me share a little secret with you. Try talking to him about exploring the wild. You'll win his trust in no time. Oh? Ah, oh, Lisa. The Grandmaster's letter is just on the table. Traveler, Paimon, it's been a long time. Apologies, I didn't get the chance to talk with you during the meeting just now. It's okay. Don't worry about it. If you don't have any plans in the immediate future, why not stay in Mondstadt for a while? We'll be celebrating the Vine Lesa Fest very soon. Don't be deceived. Jean may appear very composed, but she's been missing you both terribly recently. <laughs> Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave you to catch up. I'm going to read my letter. <laughs> I've missed Mondstadt too. Yeah, Mondstadt's where our journey began after all. We have a lot of fond memories here. Mm. Um... Master Jean, neither of us really knows anything about this Vine Lisa Fest. Could you tell us more about it? Yes, of course. The Vine Lisa Fest is an ancient Mondstadt festival, just like Ludi Harpastum and Windbloom. In addition, it's the most important part of the fall. Each fall, the west wind blows in Mondstadt. Legend has it that the wonderful scent of Mondstadt's winemaking during the harvest season entices even the Animo Archon into attendance, <laughs> being the great wine lover that he is. Oh, no. <laughs> Naturally. Oh, Wendy. No matter where he is, he will transform into a soft breeze and return to his homeland. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, that sounds like the Animo Archon, all right. <laughs> yeah. For this reason, Mondstatters call the western wind the returning wind. The Vinlesa Fest originally began as a celebration to welcome Lord Barbados on his return. Oh? In the past, every household would brew fresh wine around this time of year and keep it sealed at least until wind coming day during the following year's Vinlesa Fest. Oh? Uncasking the sealed wine is a symbolic way of inviting the Animo Archon to share a drink. Legend holds that if the Animo Archon is satisfied with the taste of the wine, he will summon a gentle breeze to richly bless the people. Richly bless? Ha <laughs> ha Knowing him, it was probably blessing them with more good wine the next year. Most likely. That's a good question. Huh. But there's really no way of knowing. These are very old stories. Many of the details have been lost to time. Yep, that'll happen. Some stories change completely as they get passed down. Hence why these days, Mondstatters will get into endless arguments over what kind of flower a wind bloom is. Yeah. <laughs> All part of how cultural heritage is created. Indeed. But for the time being, at least, the tradition of paying tribute to the Animo Archon on Windcoming Day is still alive and well. And the Vine Lisa Fest remains a time for Mondstatters to share the joy of the harvest with one another as they partake of fine wines. This is a time of the year when many Mondstatters living away from Mondstadt return to their hometown. For those unable to return, Vine Lisa Fest is the period when they miss their family and friends most keenly. Oh, so that's why the Grandmaster wrote, May the wind carry our sentiments back to your side. For this year, we've joined forces with the Church of Favonius and the Adventurers Guild to host a celebration on the banks of Cider Lake, just outside of Springvale. There will also be a traditional wine market during the festival period. Wine market? <laughs> Paimon's immediately interested. Well, originally, it was simply a place where winemakers and farmers would come to trade in raw ingredients for winemaking. These days, it is a much grander affair. Not only will you find a range of choice wines, but seasonal fruit beverages and food items for everyone to enjoy too. A lot of people also sell secondhand goods and handicrafts at the market. 
The Knights of Favonius plan to use this as an opportunity to do some fundraising for needy children and elderly people in the city. Oh, that's nice. Wow, sounds pretty cool. If you have the time, I encourage you to take a look around. I hope you'll find it a worthwhile experience. Um, now, Lisa, what was the Grand Master's message to you about? I was just about to bring that up. The Grand Master says he wants me to handle something for him. Something to do with Razor's past. Razor's past? Razor told us that he was raised by a pack of wolves in Wolvingdom. Yeah. He never knew his parents. In his own words, the wolf pack is his lupica, which means family. Yes, that was as much as I knew as well. But in his letter, the Grand Master says that in the cabinet above the third bookshelf, to the right of the grandfather clock in Jean's office, there's a wooden box containing some items that Razor's parents left for him. He says it's time to give the box to Razor. Ooh. Does this mean the Grand Master knew Razor's parents? It would seem so. The Grand Master didn't simply run into Razor one day in Wolvendom and teach him how to use a sword. No. The connection between them goes back much further. Ooh. Wow! Well, come on! Let's go find Razor! He'll be pretty excited to find out something about his true parents! Hmm... I... Paimon, wait. Lisa, something's worrying you. Oh, cutie. Nothing escapes your eyes, does it? Hmm... To be honest, I'm worried too. For the child who never met their biological parents, this kind of conversation is always a difficult one, even for the most well-adjusted. Exactly. By contrast, Razor grew up in Wolvendom and has had very limited contact with human society. Who knows whether he's ready for this or not? Yep. I'm sure the Grand Master will have given due consideration to Razor's circumstances. Perhaps he felt that now would be the most appropriate time. Hmm, that's a good point. Okay, cuties, can I leave you to break the news to Razor? Absolutely. He thinks of me as his teacher, so he might not open up to me if he gets upset. But you are his trusted friends. I think it makes more sense for him to hear about this from you. Don't worry, leave this to us. We'll talk it out with Razor. Thank you, sweetie. <laughs> no problem. Try to be as encouraging as you can. Someone his age needs all the love and support they can get. <laughs> True. Hey, look! It's a hunting mm. trap. Hmm. It looks like the ones that the hunters from Springvale use. Jesus. Huh? What is it? There are traces of electro energy near the trap. Electro energy? Hmm. Paimon wonders if it could be Razor. But Paimon thought he was pretty good at avoiding the hunters. Well, anyway, let's follow the traces of Electro and see where they lead. Yeah. All right. The last trap has been set. Razor, thanks for coming with me all this way. It's okay. My legs are strong. Hmm? What is it, Razor? <laughs> it smells familiar. Friend. From far away. Razor! Hey, buddy! It's been a while. Oh, and it's Draft too. Are you two hunting together? Yes, it's almost harvest season, and the boars are venturing into the towns and wineries looking for food. <laughs> They're trampling crops and destroying the vineyards. Someone could get seriously hurt. Yeah. The Knights of Favonius came to us asking for help, keeping the boars a safe distance away from the population. I and Uncle Browncat catch boars, protect everyone. <laughs> Paimon remembers you used to hide away from the hunters. <laughs> you can say that again. Razor was the star of the show this time. He let the wolves know we'd be coming, so we were able to get through Wolvendome without anyone getting hurt. Aww. Helping everyone 
helping Lupacall makes me happy. <sighs> but much talking. Very tired now. <laughs> Still, it's a sign of progress. I'm happy for you. Yeah! But, um, actually, we came here today because we have some really important news. Oh. I don't know. Oh. Razor, do you mean you don't want to know about your real parents? I want to know, but don't want to know. Uh, so you do want to know, but at the same time you don't want to know? Huh, sounds complicated. I understand where Razor is coming from. Traveler, come and take a look at the trap I just placed. Let's give Razor some space to process things. Yeah. <sighs> Seems like you have something to say. Uh, yes, I have some thoughts about this after seeing how Razor reacted. We've been hunting together a lot recently. The kid might not talk much, but still, I feel like I've come to understand him a little over the time we've spent together. Here's what I think. He definitely wants to find out about his parents. It's just that his fear of the unknown is overwhelming everything else he's feeling. Yeah, I figured. I'm a father myself, so I know a thing or two about kids. You know, when Diana was little, if I got back late from a hunt one night, she'd be watching me like a hawk for days afterwards, as if she was worried that I might abandon her. Oh. Do you mean... Razor's worried that he was abandoned by his own parents? Oh, no. Exactly. I think that's the heart of it. And if it turns out they did, well, I don't think there's anything we could say to console him. That's not my only concern, though. Razor is developing at his own pace. There are lots of issues that can't be solved all in one go, but he's making progress one step at a time. Yeah. But now this thing with his parents is added into the mix. It might push him to want to figure out once and for all where he comes from and where he's going. Seems like a similar take to Lisa's. Hmm. Maybe all mature adults think like this, huh? Wait, but then again, Master Jean had a different view. She said it's more about trusting other people and in your own instincts. Oh, what do you think? He'll have to face this sooner or later. I will be there for him as a friend through this. Gotcha. Well, knowing that he's got a friend like you to rely on makes me feel much better about this whole thing. Paimon, how about this? Okay, got it. Right, let's head back. We don't want to keep him waiting. Oh, poor guy. Hey, Razor, so what are your thoughts? Still thinking. My heart, it feels strange. Like being stabbed by a wolf hook. Oh. Hmm, I feel so bad for him. What do you think of Varka? Varka? Hmm, tall, very strong, likes to laugh. Then do you trust Varka? Yes, trust. He's very good to me. Give me a name. Teach me to fight. But now, busy with important work, I miss him. Oh. You know, Razor, Farka used up all the paper writing this letter, but he still made sure he found room on the back to add a note for Lisa. He specifically told her to give you the things that your parents left for you. That means that he thinks the items have a special meaning for you. But more importantly than that, whatever happens, the Traveler, Paimon, Lisa, and all your other friends will always be here for you. Don't worry. Everything will be fine. That's right. And old Uncle Brown Cat's here to support you as well. <laughs> Oh. Okay, thank you. I decide I want to go with you 
to see teacher. <laughs> That's the spirit, kiddo. Well, you folks better be heading off then. I'm just about finished here, so I'll be heading home very shortly myself. <sighs> I'd better try and get plenty of father-daughter time in before the uh, fine laser fest starts. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> We brought Razor! We're here! Hello, teacher. I'm here to see the box. Ah, oh, my little wolf cub's in a good mood. I'm assuming they've discussed the whole story with you already? Here, this is it. The wooden box. I haven't touched it, except for taking it out of the cabinet. When you're sure you're ready, you can open it yourself. Yes, I am sure. Ooh. Oh, this is just a pile of junk. Paimon thought there'd at least be a letter or something. I don't think it's a pile of junk. Paimon, be polite. Uh-oh. You don't think that, after all this time, Varka might be getting mixed up between different boxes? <laughs> There is a scent. A scent? What kind? A scent I remember from a long, long time ago. It's their scent. Aww. Human scent. Father and mother scent. Aww. <laughs> oh, incredible. You still remember scents from all the way back in your childhood. Wow. You have a really good sense of smell, Razor. Guess being wild by nature has its advantages. Oh, let's see what other leads we can find. Hmm, this woolen hand puppet looks kind of wonky. Guess it must be handmade, huh? Is this a part from a ruin guard? Wait, hey, look, this wine bottle is still half full. And there's a note stuck on it. Thousand. A uh, thousand wind wine. Oh, so it's a bottle of thousand wind wine? Teacher, you know? Of course. Thousand wind wine was the first kind of wine that Mondstatters ever learned to make, or so they say. As to how it got its name, some say it's a reference to the numerous ingredients used to make it, while others say it's because every bottle tastes slightly different. Oh. I remember reading somewhere that there are all sorts of weird and wonderful ways of brewing it, and that it's very difficult to ensure it comes out tasting the same each time. This all makes it impractical to commercialize. Wine merchants are much more comfortable working with reliable, consistent-tasting products. Mmm, makes sense. That's why you'll almost never see Thousand Wind wine in the markets or taverns. Huh. In fact, it looks like your parents brewed this bottle themselves. That must mean there's something pretty important about it. <gasps> oh, Paimon has an idea! Razor, you got a good nose. Why don't you open it up and take a whiff? Maybe it'll tell you something. Okay. Huh. He seems really in the zone. And is that a smile? <laughs> seems like it. Find anything? Sweet. Cold. A little bitter. I like. Many things all mixed together. Ugh, but things in wine smell different. <laughs> Even you can't tell what it is, Razor? I will try again. <sighs> it's okay, Razor. Don't push yourself too hard. What do we do when we try something and it doesn't work? Try another way. Mm. That's right. You still remember what I taught you. Oh, it's almost the Vine Lisa Fest. 
Everyone who knows anything worth knowing about wine will be gathering in Mondstadt. Surely someone will know a thing or two about Thousand Wind Wine. Oh, great idea! <laughs> will Venti be coming? Make sure you don't miss the opening ceremony, cutie. Everyone will be there. Razor, you should go too. It'll be a good opportunity to ask around. Okay. Ask many people. I will try. You can do it, Razor. Don't worry. We'll be right there with you. We can be your go-betweens. You know, like you are with the wolves for draft. We'll be there with you, just like we promised. Okay. Then I will go back now. I need to tell Lupacall about human mother and human father. Great! See you at the opening ceremony! Thank you, everyone, for your patience. I am pleased to announce that this year's Vinlesa Fest has officially begun. We hope the residents of Mondstadt and visitors from all over will enjoy the magnificent wines and experience the joy of the harvest. When wind coming day arrives, we will hold a grand toasting ceremony to welcome the Animo Archon Barbados back home. Let the wind lead! <gasps> Vinti! Let the wind lead! Razor, you're here already! Hmm, so many people. You can do it, Razor! We're here with you. Come on, let's sneak out of here. There's someone we gotta find. Find? Who? Oh. <laughs> Just some tone deaf bard. But he's also a know-it-all and loves nothing more than drinking, so he might actually be able to help. <laughs> yep. Hey, Tone Deaf Bard! <laughs> hey! It's been a while. So nice to see you again. Traveler, Paimon, how do you do? <laughs> I had a feeling I'd run into you soon, during this most enchanting of festivals. <laughs> Spoken like a true poet. Hmm, but reading between the lines here, if one bottle is tipsy and two is merry, just how many is enchanting exactly? <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't say that. This festival has so much more to offer than just drinking. Anyway, hey, Razor, how have you been? All right, I have a question. Yeah. Razor has something he wants to ask you about. Know anything about Thousand Wind Wine? Ooh, now there's a name that takes me back. <laughs> Let me think. How long has it been since I last heard someone mention Thousand Wind Wine? Razor's parents left him a box with a half bottle of wine inside, and there's a label on it that says Thousand Wind Wine. We heard there's a lot of history behind this type of wine, and the brewing methods go way, way back. So we figured you'd be a good person to ask. It smells good, but don't know what's inside. I see, I see. So you want to know how Thousand Wind Wine is made? Well, you came to the right person. I happen to know a little rhyme called, well, as it happens, Thousand Wind Wine. <laughs> I was going to save it for wind coming day, but far be it from me to deny an early serenade to a friend in need. How about it? Shall I recite it for you? A song. Not easy to understand, but still want to hear. Excellent answer. Then, uh, hear it you shall. Fill up the barrels and store them away. Then wait, wait for a windier day. Wax the bottles, seal them tight, for the south wind that soothes, for the north wind that bites. How does this fine wine taste to the tongue? As Mondstadt to the ear, like a sweet dream of freedom. And what are the fruits that went into the brew? An explorer's courage, a love tender and true. <laughs> a defender's will, strong as yesteryear, Joining the thousand winds in a song of good cheer. Turning sour into sweet, bitter notes fade away. As we wait, wait for a windier day. 
Ah, <laughs> uh, thank you so much for the applause. Uh, was the rhyme of help to you? Like wine. A little sweet, but now... head spinning. Don't understand. Oh. Don't worry, it's not just you. That was supposed to be about winemaking, but it didn't give a single detail about the process. <laughs> well, maybe it's a little abstract and romanticized, but that's one of the defining features of Mondstadt poetry. Okay, so let's try to pin this down. What did the poem say the ingredients are? Hmm. Um... An explorer's courage, a love tender and true, a defender's will, and the thousand winds? Song of good cheer? Nope, Paimon has absolutely no idea what any of these refer to. Look, Tone Deaf Bard, you clearly know what the whole thing means, so could you do us a favor and at least give us a hint? You misunderstand me. I'm not trying to make you work for it or anything, but the lyrics are what they are. If there's anything they left out, even I can't fill in the blanks. If you want to know the secret behind this sweet scent, you might have to start by rolling up your sleeves. Rolling up our sleeves? You mean we need to go and make this wine for ourselves? And somehow that'll teach us everything we want to know? Uh, this better not be a prank! <laughs> We've known each other for so long, and you still don't trust my intentions? Oh, oh the pain. <laughs> I trust. I want to try. I want to make wine and find answers. That's a good boy. Good, good job, Razor. I'm very proud of you. If I know how to make wine, then I know what is in father and mother's wine. By relieving their actions, maybe we will understand what kind of people they were. Right. I want to know about them. Well, if you say so, Razor, guess we'll have to take Tone Deaf Bard's word on this one. We'll give it a try. And as first-time winemakers, there's no shame if it turns out bad. <laughs> Don't worry, really. Freedom is the key here. It's not as hard as you might think. As long as you add ingredients to the mix in a spirit of joy and sincerity, I promise you will reap the rewards you wish for. Hmm. I will tell Poem to teach her. Then I need to think alone. That's the spirit. So how about we meet again in two days? Let's say same place right here? Okay, I will remember. See you then. See ya! Huh? Where the heck's Razor? Paimon thought he would have been here by now. Hmm. He had a pretty big day when we last saw him. Do you think he fell asleep when he got back and is still snoozing away now? <laughs> Sounds more like something you'd do than Razor. Let's wait and see. Fair enough. You're right. Let's keep waiting. Well, since we've got some time on our hands, let's put our heads together and try to figure out that poem. Tone Deaf Bard mentioned some ingredients, but they all sounded super abstract. An explorer's courage, a love tender and true, a defender's will, and the thousand winds song of good cheer. <laughs> Do you have any ideas? Maybe they aren't the ingredients. Maybe they describe the wine's character. Yeesh, that's even more abstract. How do we go about looking for this wine's character? Where do we start? The Adventurer's Guild, the Church of Favonius. Huh? Are you saying that it has something to do with Mondstadt's institutions? Yes, and as far and as for the word defender, it makes me think of the Knights of Favonius. Wow, that actually makes a surprising amount of sense. So the poem wasn't talking about any specific ingredients after all. More like the general gist. Now that you mention it, 
It just so happens that all the institutions you mentioned are organizers of the Violaza Fest. Wait, this is way too big of a coincidence. That tone deaf bard, did he just make all this up on the spot? <laughs> Most likely. <laughs> Perhaps he did, as a way of helping us to help Razor. In that case, the last part about the Thousand Winds Song of Cheer must be code for the toasting ceremony! Oh, <laughs> now we're cooking! We'll crack your riddle recipe yet, Tone Deaf Bard! When Razor gets here, let's visit all the places you mentioned and talk to some people we know there! We definitely should be able to find some more clues that way! Miss Honorary Knight, come <gasps> on! Please! Oh, I'm sorry, I'm late. It's okay, Razor. That's all right, we were just chatting. The Traveler's pretty smart, so thanks to her, we're finally on to something! Hello, Klee <laughs> and Razor. Hi, I was on my way, then I saw Klee. They let me out for Vinyl Lisa Fest. <laughs> Oh my god, that sounds so bad. They let me out. Oh my god. Albedo is super busy helping Timaeus fix his recipe for an extra strong sobriety potion. So he doesn't have time to come play with me right now. I'm just playing by myself instead. But it's so cool! All the grown-ups in Mondstadt are out to celebrate the festival! Everyone's smiling and having loads of fun! I wanted to join in too, so I made a whole bunch of stuff so I can celebrate with everyone in my very own way. Let me guess. Bombs. Very own way? Uh-oh. This does not bode well coming from Glee. <laughs> And that's when I bumped into Razor! Oh, Fuse so of the Foam Bright is averted. Great job, Razor. <laughs> Razor was acting kind of different than usual, like he was thinking about something. So I asked him what happened. And then Razor said that he was looking for his mommy! <laughs> Aww. I did not say mommy. <laughs> Hey, silly. Mommies are important people, so finding your mommy is a super important job. That's why Klee's gonna come help. Yay! <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> Razor, Razor, finally, I found you. Bennett, what's up, man? Bennett? Oh, <laughs> look who's here. Hey, everyone. Hey! Here, this is for you! Oh? Uh, a small lampcrest? Yep, that's right. I tripped up on it this morning and took a little tumble. I did a full face plant, but somehow, this little thing came out completely unscathed. That's when I knew it was destined to go into your wine mix. <laughs> Bennett, how did you manage to trip up on a small lamp grass? <laughs> yeah. Huh, that's true. They do glow after all. To be fair, they only glow at night. It doesn't help during the day. No, no, I wasn't talking about the glowing. What I meant was they're really big and easy to spot. So I don't get how you didn't see it. Uh, <laughs> uh, I was just running too fast and got careless, I guess. Okay, I guess maybe I won't tell them about the other face plants that came after that. Oh, Bennett. Anyway, I've been all over the place trying to find Razor this morning. Everyone I asked told me I just missed him. Good thing I've caught up now. I can finally catch my breath. What a trooper. <laughs> Definitely time to take a break. Thanks. How did you know I need ingredients? Oh, that? Yeah, interesting story. This lady came to see Master Cyrus, asking for the Adventurer Guild's support with the Vine Lace Fest. She said she was a librarian. Anyway, she mentioned your situation too, and asked if we could help. Whoa, 
Lisa is doing some real work for once? <laughs> oh, so that was Lisa? People say she's crazy intelligent, but just doesn't go out much. First time I've ever seen her. I thought long and hard about what ingredients to pick, and came up with a load of suggestions that I was going to discuss with you. But then I realized that small lampgrass was clearly the best. It shines a light to guide the way for explorers in the dark. Doesn't that sound like a wonderful thing? Oh, apologies for the trouble. It's no trouble, I bet. For Bennett. He really likes to help. Ah, don't give me that. I get how you must be feeling about all of this. Besides, you gotta help out your friends, right? Aww. If my family... Uh, well, my dad's ever needed help one day, I know you'd be there for me too. Yes. <laughs> Can I help too? Please, take me with you, please. I want to join in. Aww. Please in high spirits today. She seems more excited by this festival than anyone. Bennett, before now, you never talk about your family. Uh, <laughs> well, that's because I never met my parents. I was raised by some of the older adventurers in the guild, so we're not exactly a typical family. But if you do want to hear about them, I can tell you some of my dad's stories. Hmm. Okay, I'll start with the most awesome one. Oh, Bennett. You can be Mommy's kid, just like Clee. My mom is super nice. She'll take great care of you. <laughs> yeah, let Alice adopt all the kids who have no biological parents. <laughs> huh? Hmm. I really appreciate the thought, Klee, but I'm afraid I can't accept your offer. <laughs> I already have my dads and all my friends, and let's not forget that I'm the leader of Benny's adventure team. You don't need to worry about me. Oh, okay. I got it. Um, then have this. Uh-oh. A jumpy donkey? Yeah, it's a lazy, dopey, jumpy dumpty that always dozes and never explodes. I hope you guys can be best friends. Oh, Clee. Are you sure? Yep. Jumpy Dumpty will be happy to make a new friend, too. I'm also happy for you. I still have to look for ingredients with Razor. <laughs> Why don't you two go adventuring together? Good idea! Maybe Klee will bring Bennett some good luck, and the adventure will go smoothly. And you might just find some treasures you'd never noticed before. Of course, it's also highly possible that Klee will be the only one who gets lucky. <laughs> Still, on the flip side, Klee won't be getting into any trouble with Bennett there, and this way she'll still get to enjoy the Violetta Fest. Cool! Don't worry about a thing! We'll look after each other. <laughs> Good. Yay! Adventure! Treasure! Find Lisa Fest! Let's go! Let's go! <laughs> oh, she's so happy. Oh, wait, but what about Wolfie? Wolfie, uh, I mean Razor needs looking after. Honorary night, Paimon, you'd better take care of Razor, okay? Make sure he finds his mommy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it to us. <laughs> Be careful. <laughs> oh man, I love Razor's face. <laughs> Good luck. See you later, folks. See ya. Have fun. a good mood. <laughs> oh, Paimon almost forgot the whole reason we came here. Razor, the Traveler and Paimon were just chatting about the ingredients Venti mentioned in his poem. We think that they're actually a description of the wine's characteristics. Plus, it seems like each of them means something special to one of the three big institutions in Mondstadt. So, if we talk to some people we know at each place, maybe we'll find what you're looking for. <sighs> What's wrong? 
something on your mind? Do you want to talk about it? Yes. These days, I think a lot. Oh? I am not smart. Not like teacher. Not like traveler. But I still have to think. Everyone is ready to help, but some things I must do myself. Mm, understandable. I don't understand human father and mother, but I must find a way to understand. Maybe I can learn about other people's father and mother first, then think about my own father and mother. Hmm, that's actually a good point. That's why I want to ask questions. That's great! Keep at it, and you'll definitely find the answer eventually. Never knew Bennett is like me. When he talks about dads, his scent changes. Warm, like a bed of straw in the sun. Let's find more people to speak to. Yeah, we should head back into the city. Let's find a friendly face at the Church of Favonius. Hmm. Now, who does Razor know best at the church? Excuse me? I couldn't help but overhear you're about to head back into the city. Is that right? Uh, apparently. I'm waiting on a fruit cart from the city. It should be here now, but I'm getting worried that something may have happened on the way. But I can't leave the festival to check up on it. Would you be able to do me a huge favor and keep an eye out for the cart on your way back? Sure. Um, well, if it's on the way... Okay, we go. I go too. Everyone helps me. Now I have chance to help everyone. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. <laughs> this way. Oh, Paimon sees the cart, but what are these hilly trolls doing here? Do they want some fresh fruit now, too? To the rescue! Yep, let's go. Oh, I get to play as Razor. I'm fine, thanks to you. You are just in time. Any later and all you found here is a pile of pulp. And I don't think there'd be much left of the fruit either. They're still waiting for you at the festival. Keep your eyes peeled on the road. Got it. Well, thanks again. I'd better not delay this delivery any longer. So, goodbye and happy Vine Lace Fest. Thank you. Thanks to you too, kiddo. <laughs> <sighs> What is it, Razor? You seem a little... Enemy following. Oh? Enemy? <laughs> I think we're a little closer than that. Rosaria! On some level, you could even say that we're brother and sister. Oh? Rosaria! What the heck are you doing here? Wait, actually, turning up at random places is pretty normal for you. <laughs> exactly. Okay, next question. What the heck do you mean, brother and sister? Varka taught you how to use that sword, I take it. Swift, but powerful. <laughs> I can spot that old-timer style anywhere. Uh, huh? I see you're not much of a talker. Well, there's something else you could learn from Varka. Never lost for words, even when he has nothing to say. It'd be good conversation practice for you. Just a shame we have no idea when I'll be back. It's okay. I will wait. 
brother and sister? Farka? Oh, Paimon gets it. Farka is a father figure to both of them, so that makes them family. Just not by blood. Hmm. Well, blood relations are overrated anyway, don't you think? Uh, hard to say. I get it. In the final moments of your life, the people there with you won't necessarily be your blood relatives. Cold, dark grown-up. You also don't remember what your real mother and real father look like? Huh. So you're helping him dig up some info on his biological parents. And trying to help him build a concept of family along the way. You could say that. All right, you got me. I barely have any memories of my birth parents. The last time I saw them was long before I had any understanding of the world around me. But that seems pretty common. Even in this day and age, there are plenty of people in the world who can't stop thinking about their families, but will never get to see them. Anyway, if you're never gonna meet someone, it's not worth spending mental energy on them. It's more important to focus on the kind of person you want to become. No, you are wrong about this. Oh? Lupacol protect each other. Human family also important. Must care about them. Fine. So let's say you do find out who your parents were and they were saints. Or the opposite, they were complete monsters. What then? How would that affect your life choices? What would you do about it? Um... Whew, Rosaria's take is a little on the nose. That's a hard one for Razor to answer. But it's normal to be curious. Don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to make this any more difficult than it already is. But Razor's feeling lost and confused right now. And all the other monstatters we know are too sunny and bright to tell it like it really is. <laughs> the sun nurtures many good things, but it can't do anything about the problems lurking in the shadows. Wow, Rosaria. All right, I'll leave it there. <laughs> Take this flower. It's icy cold, just like me. Barbara's busy preparing the sung poetry event for the Vine Lisa Fest. She couldn't get away, so I picked an ingredient out on behalf of the church. But can we really use a mist flower? Won't it freeze the entire barrel? No, not now that I've dealt with it. The bard did say to think freedom, didn't he? So go on, take it. It won't be a problem. Aw, Rosaria! You're more thoughtful than Paimon realized! <laughs> <laughs> uh, wait! You heard the bard say that? Were you spying on us? <laughs> Thank you. Don't mention it. It's nothing. Varka's been a big help to me in the past, so just consider it returning a favor. Besides, if I'm your older sister, I might as well act like it. <laughs> Good luck finding your answers. Now you see her, now you don't. I'm on slowly getting used to her style. <laughs> oh, oh well, as love tender and true goes, that was pretty awkward, but still counts, right? Now that's left is the Knights of Avonius. <sighs> What's up, Razor? Razor, are you still thinking about what Rosaria said? Her words are like mist flower. They are cold, and they sting. But cold also good for wounds, like wolf hook. I need to think about it. Maybe then I will understand. It'll take some time. There's no need to rush it. We'll wait for you. Okay. I will come with you. I think while we walk. So you see, you're the best person for this. Oh, just in time. Lisa and I were just talking about Razor's situation. Oh? Where were we? Ah, yes. The barrel. Huh? But, uh, obviously...
Actually, the nuts part is supposed to be a defender's will. But what kind of ingredient is a barrel? Obviously, that's not what he meant. <laughs> Seems entirely reasonable to me. Is your brain half asleep or something? It doesn't make any sense at all. <laughs> oh, Paimon, don't worry. You'll get your ingredient. I've already tasked someone with sorting it out. Oh, who? The person is very conscientious and wants to properly research their contribution. So it may take some time, but hopefully it'll be worth the wait. As for the barrel, how else were you planning on mixing all the ingredients? Surely not in the giant cooking pot at Dada Upa Gorge. <laughs> ah, the memories. That would be a suspicious thousand wind wine. <laughs> After much deliberation, I realized this was a job for the most sociable and savviest member in our ranks, the cavalry captain. So I asked him to take a trip to the Dawn Winery and somehow bring back a wine barrel. Uh, all right, spare me the flattery, Lisa. We're all friends here, and I know you're only trying to help your student. But I haven't been back there in a long time. This could be quite difficult to accomplish in just a single trip. Difficult? For you? Don't be silly. Negotiating is your biggest strength. Fine Lisa Fest is one of the most important festivals in Mondstadt. And you know how Diluc thinks better than anyone. Just drop a few little hints, like how this is the first festival Mondstadt has had in a long time. We're short on much-needed supplies for a multitude of reasons. Oh, who can help us? Why not just ask him directly? We can ask. When he hears that, I guarantee you he'll offer to help out with finances and sourcing goods. Lisa's literally trying to extort Master D. Luke. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. I suppose. All right. I'll head out right away. Well, he didn't take much persuading. <laughs> oh, and Paimon was just about to think for the things she's been doing for Razor behind the scenes. Oh, Paimon doesn't even know whose side to be on anymore. On Razor's side, obviously. Mm. Traveler and teacher did a lot for me. A lot of work. But me, I still can't answer questions. I'm so useless. You're not useless, Razor. Dear me. What's gotten you so upset, my little wolf cub? We can't have you being so down in the dumps. Some questions he can't stop thinking about. Ah, I see. Hmm, cutie, how about you keep Kaya company while I stay here and help Razor process his feelings? As his teacher, I owe him some tutelage anyway. Come and collect him in a few days' time. The last ingredient should be ready by then as well. Splendid. I was just thinking about how nice it would be to have some company on my trip. <laughs> we'll gladly come. I don't know what is right, but I trust teacher. I accept. It's a plan, then. Lisa, you're a godsend. Thank you. Oh, well, aren't you a sweet one? But this is as much my business as yours. It's my pleasure, really. Run along now, and don't forget to tell D. Luke that the Knights of Favonius send our regards. Hi there, Master D. Luke! <laughs> hey, D. Luke! Oh, I was just wondering who'd be coming all the way out here during the Vine Laser Fest. So, it's you two. Or actually, three. <laughs> <sighs> and you, too. Hmm. Brr, so cold. Almost enough to make me feel unwelcome here, Master D. Luke. Don't forget that this is my home, too. I'm fairly certain that taking a trip home during festival season is a universal custom, common to all the cultures of Tevat. Please get to the point. The point is one that you've already raised yourself. The Vinlesa Fest. To celebrate this long-awaited festival, the Acting Grand Master has been coordinating with both the Church and the Adventurers Guild to host a series of events. Unfortunately, given the financial situation of the Knights of Favonius, well, 
I'm sure you can imagine. And the Knights of Favonius's woes have what exactly to do with me? Hey, no need to be so cruel. Even I'm not going to take that. Everyone's just doing the best they can for Mondstadt. Now, I can't remember the last time I tasted Don Winery's Weinlesefest special. And I'm sure the Mondstadt populace would echo this sentiment. Are you going to deny others the opportunity to drink to their heart's content just because you don't like to drink yourself? Check it out! Kaya's not so subtly asking for freebies. He's actually doing it! <laughs> what a guy. Anyway, speaking of the knights, everyone dearly hopes that you'll rejoin our ranks again one day. Then we'll be one big happy family again. Oh boy. If we were able to enjoy the sterling reputation of Master D. Luke, my, I'm sure people would be queuing for our charity booth all the way to Falcon Coast. <sighs> Give that silver tongue of yours a rest. You might need it to maintain public order at the festival. Duly noted on the financial issues you raised. I'll have Elzer follow up with Hertha in more detail. And I just so happen to have a batch of wine that I can offer as a token of appreciation to everyone that has been working so hard for the festival. Shall I address it to you personally? That would be an absurd request, even for me. The words, with compliments from the Dawn Winery, ought never be preceded by, to the cavalry captain. Is that not the unwritten rule? You're better informed than I thought. In that case, I will leave this with Adeline and keep everything anonymous. I really can't thank you enough. Master D. Luke is so generous. That's all Paimon needs to get that warm, fuzzy feeling. Uh, which is just as well since she won't be allowed to drink a drop. <laughs> huh. Are you two here regarding the Vine Lace Fest too? Actually, we're here about Razor. We need a barrel. Poor Razor. He grew up so fast. And he's still looking for his father. Master D. Luke, we really ought to lend him a hand. How come Klee said he's looking for his mom, but Kaya says he's looking for his dad? It might make more sense to them, but it's gonna get confusing for everyone else. It's okay. I understand. We have a spare barrel in the winery. It's a little old, but it's been specially treated for durability. You could leave it next to a flaming flower all day and there wouldn't be a scratch. I think that one should satisfy your needs. Yay! Thank you, d -Luke. Oh, oh, oh. Master d -Luke. Sounds great! We'll take it! When can we come fetch it? No need. I'll have someone deliver it to the festival market. Just collect it from the angel share stand. Aw, you always make things so nice and easy for us, Master D. Luke. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Razor will really appreciate it. Thank you. You're more than welcome. Helping each other is what friends do. <laughs> Wonderful. Always eager to help and never forgets to return a favor. That's the Master D. Luke I know. Oh, it's nearly dinner time. Uh, would you care to stay for a meal? Ooh, we would love to. How time flies. I'll be on my way then. <laughs> How did you put it? Oh, yes. Taking a trip home during festival season is a universal custom, common to all the cultures of Tevat. Now that even Master D. Luke has made an offer, are you quite sure you won't stay for a meal after coming all this way, Master Kaya? I couldn't possibly, Adeland. I wouldn't want to trouble you. Oh, don't say that. How often do I get a chance to indulge my dear Master Kaya, hmm? Tea for the cavalry captain when you visit in an official capacity doesn't count. I only get to spoil you if you let me cook for you. Uh, well then, what happened to your swagger? Lost for words? <laughs> <laughs> D. Luke, 
You surely you wouldn't dream of disappointing Adeland. Mm, the more the merrier. All right then. I'll take you up on the offer. Adeland, one more set of cutlery, please, if you'd be so kind. <laughs> oh, I'm on so full. Adeline's cooking's amazing. Everything looked and tasted so beautiful. Thank you for your hospitality. Glad you liked it. You're welcome to join again anytime. Oh? Then I may have to tag along on the traveler's adventures more often in the future. Kai <laughs> is back to his usual ways. <laughs> All right, now that our task is complete and our bellies are full, it's time for me to get back to work. Take care, Master Kaya. Have a safe trip back. We should get going as well. Lisa's taking care of Razor, but the Vyraiza Fest can't do without us. <laughs> See you next time, Master D. Luke. See ya. Indeed. Goodbye. Lisa said that the Knights of Avonius would help us get ingredients for Razor's wine, right? They should probably be ready by now. Let's go check. Hmm. Hyman wonders how Razor's class has been going. <laughs> uh, Sucrose, wait! Oh! Noelle! Yes, I remember who she is. Uh, honorary Knight! Paimon, please stop her! Whoa! You scared Paimon! What's gotten the two of you so worked up? Sucrose and I agreed to present the wine ingredient to you together. But when she heard that Razor will be showing up, she insisted that she won't spend a moment longer here than she has to. Oh? I... I'm not good at dealing with strangers. Anyway, as long as the ingredient gets into the right hands, that's all that matters. Oh, that won't do. We worked on this together, and we should present it together. I can't take credit for what you did. It's not about the credit. Wait, so does this mean the Knights of Avonius' ingredient is a product of bioalchemy? Yes, it's a quadruple sweetness sunsetia. Oh. Quadruple sweetness? But aren't regular ones sweet enough as it is? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> also, why is sunsetia? Okay, um, let me give you the full story. I love the scent of wine, and after reading up on the art of winemaking, I have grasped some of the key principles. In short, whatever ingredients you use, it's essential to include something sweet. In an attempt to select the most suitable ingredient, I gathered samples of all the sweet plants and fruits I could find in the Mondstadt area. Then, I tried them all in turn and took detailed notes. I also factored in the differences between the same ingredient grown in different locations. For instance, sweet flowers from Springvale are a little sweeter than those at Cape Oath. Whoa, you've been really busy. Wow, that sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. It was no problem at all. Just my duty as a maid of Favonius. The chance to source the Defender's will on behalf of the Knights of Favonius is a huge honor for me. Noel, your eyes are sparkling. But Paimon thinks it could be because of Lisa's brainwashing. Paimon, shush. Um, anyway, I, I was worried that my evaluation would be too subjective if only I were involved. Thankfully, I ran into Sucrose the other day on her way out of the lab. Oh no! <clears throat> what is it, Sucrose? I just remembered why I left the lab that day. I was supposed to go and fetch some lab equipment we imported recently. Oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. That look on your face seems to say you forgot all about it and have been in the lab this whole time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh. <sighs> Don't worry about it. It's my fault, really. I'll go and see Marjorie about the equipment shortly. Carry on, Noel. Oh, okay. Anyway, 
Sucrose is a true professional when it comes to this kind of research. I showed her my list, and she made some extremely valuable suggestions. Please, you don't need to go out of your way to compliment me. Noelle filled me in on the background of the whole situation. I was moved to see how seriously she took this task, even though she'd never even met Razor before. However, none of the potential ingredients she had identified were perfect candidates, in my opinion. What we needed was a fruit high in sugar and easily fermentable. After a final look at Noelle's list, I picked the Zensetia sample from near Cider Lake as a basis, with a view to improving it. Using bioalchemical techniques, we were able to amplify the sweetness, then conduct a few tests to compare the results against the benchmarks. Watching Sucrose work on an experiment when she's in the zone blew me away. Such focus and determination. I, I already said don't compliment me. <laughs> anyway, the result of our research is the Epsilon series Tetrasweet Sensetia, Variation 63. And it's finally ready. The sweetness has been verified through rigorous testing, and the size and color are both optimal, too. Noel shortened the name to Quadruple Sweetness Sensetia. <laughs> Unfortunately, it can't be produced on a very large scale under the current conditions. But as long as we have enough for Razor. This is more than sufficient. Traveler, there's something else I'd like to share with you. Oh? Growing up, I was lucky. I was never the best at dealing with other people, but my parents never placed any expectations on me. They never said to me, you need to be more sociable or anything like that. They just said I should do what I enjoy. Aww. So, I'm well aware that I'm one of the lucky ones. I haven't lived Razor's life, and I can't pretend to imagine what it must have been like. So, I don't know how much it will mean coming from me, but I truly hope he can find happiness and spend his life doing what he loves. Oh, Sucrose. <laughs> oh. Sorry, I am late again. It's okay, Razor. Don't worry about it. Teacher forgot about the time. I kept talking and talking. <laughs> That's Lisa, all right. That's all right. We were just chatting. Whoa, deja vu. Paimon said the exact same thing two days ago. Uh, wait a sec. Where did Sucrose go? <laughs> wow, she disappeared the moment he opened the door. Hello, I'm Noelle, maid of the Knights of Favonius. Hi. Here's our ingredient for you. Oh, but I can't take full credit for it. I had help from an alchemist, but right now... She, um... <laughs> She's a little busy with work. Right, yes. It's a shame she couldn't be here to present it to you in person. <sighs> Smells like... Potion, nectar, and animal crystal fly. Right? Nothing gets past your nose, does it? This Sunsetia is sweeter than ones I have smelled before. Klee said alchemy is amazing. It can make things better. That's right. I hope that this sweet fruit will help you brew the sweetest wine. The alchemist girl also had a message to pass on. Spend your life doing what you love. Thank you all. <laughs> When she has time, I want to thank her also. <laughs> I wonder if that's possible. Leave that to me. I'll figure out a way to persuade her to, uh, to not work so hard all the time so that I can introduce you to each other. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will wait. All right, now that we have all the ingredients, we can finally start making the wine. For that, we'll need a barrel. Which, if Paimon remembers correctly, is waiting for us at the Angel's Share Stand. Bye, Noelle. We're gonna head off now. See ya. Good luck with everything. See you next time. Bye. Oh, Diana! <laughs> On Fairy Night.
razor over here. Look who it is. <laughs> wow, it's Diana. I'm always sure we'd run into you at the cat's tail stand sometime, but so far we haven't seen you all festival. Ooh, traitors. Oh no, Diana, I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, um, what? Ah, I'm so mad. <laughs> I, I remember, Diana. <sighs> Pre told me the whole story. So, this bright idea was a brainchild of you two? Hmm, how could you? Razor is Daddy's friend, and he was a good influence, right up until you got him interested in wine. <laughs> Razor, you better promise me that you won't turn into one of those old booze hounds that drinks themselves silly slumps over the bar and bursts into tears. I, uh, I don't understand. <laughs> Sounds like there's been some crossed wires here. <laughs> yeah, it's not like Razor's gonna drink it. Or is he? <laughs> Kree, what exactly did you say to Diona? Um, I told her that Razor's looking for his mommy with the honorary knight's help, and you both seemed really sad and said you needed some wine so maybe Diona could help. But before I finished, Diona said, Kree, Say no more. I'm getting involved in this if it's the last thing I do. <laughs> and then we came here. <laughs> well, she's kind of right. <laughs> uh, okay. Hyman doesn't even know where to start. Um, Diana, it sounds like Klee left out a few important details in the story. Let us set the record straight. You're saying Razor wants to make the same wine that his mother and father once made? So he can learn more about them? Hmm. You better not be making this up to try to pull the wool over my eyes. We're not, I swear. <laughs> Absolutely not. Sorry, Diona. It was all Klee's fault for not explaining it properly. No, Klee, don't say that. <laughs> so... Are you still mad? Or can you help Razor make the wine? I caught a bunch of fish for us to eat. Um, and you can pet Dodoko too if you want. <laughs> She's so cute. I, I wasn't that angry. You were kind of angry. <laughs> we're just trying to help. I understand. I just don't want Razor being led astray, that's all. That's why I may have raised my voice a little bit just now. Mm. Well, since none of you plan on drinking it, then I suppose I can help you just this once, despite my reservations. Yay! Thank you, Diona! But I need you to know that I'm a mixer, not a brewer. So I'm used to working with the finished product. If you really want me to start with a bunch of raw ingredients, that's fine. But I can't make any promises about how it'll turn out. I'm sure it'll turn out delicious, like always. Yay! Diona is the best! <laughs> <laughs> you can do it, Diona! <laughs> bunch of flatterers. Now watch this. That was quick! What a cute barrel! Now we just need to find a place to store it! We wait, wait for a windier day. Hmm. Does that mean we need to put it somewhere exposed to the wind? Maybe wind rise? Very windy. Yep, if you say the word windy, that's the first place on every monster's mind! Cool! I want to come, too! <laughs> I have to keep an eye on my foolish father, so I won't be joining you. Klee, come and play again some other time. I will, I promise. Oh, 
Huh. What a curious coincidence meeting you here. <laughs> Time to fart? What are you doing here? Well, I awoke to the most magnificent aroma in the air. After following the sweet scent of fresh fruit to its source, this is where I ended up. Yeah! The fruit are super fresh and super duper sweet! I can smell it as well! <laughs> There's another reason, isn't there? Yes! Oh, uh, I remembered something important. Something that you have to do before sealing the barrel and burying it in the ground. What? We missed something? Razor, do you still remember the scent of that half bottle of Thousand Wind wine? I believe there was a hint of bitterness in there. Yes, there was. <laughs> and with very good reason, too. The source? This! Dandelion seeds? You're familiar with dandelion wine, right? Well, the people of Mondstadt believe that the wind can bring back the soul, and also preserve memories. Dandelion seeds are like living gemstones, formed from the first wisps of wind in the year. People add them to the mix at the last second, as a way of capturing the wind in the very moment that the barrel is sealed. The memory of that moment is then stored in the wine for all time. So, Thousand Wind Wine is the original dandelion wine. Oh. Wow. That's so cool. So now our story will be made into wine too. As for why it always has a different scent, well, that's because people have the freedom to include whatever ingredients they want. <laughs> but is it Razor? What you thinking about? In Mother and Father's wine, I can smell dandelion seeds, but I don't know what else. In my wine, there is a lot of friendship. <laughs> I still don't understand my mother and father, but I still have you and everyone else. Everyone has done so much for me. Farka, Teacher, Clee, Bennett, Uncle Brown Cat, Cold Lady, Grown Up with Fake Smile, Gray Tough Girl, Person That Smells Like Animal Crystal Fly, Uncle Brown Cat's Daughter, <laughs> Green Bard, Paimon, and Traveler. I remember everyone. Making wine is hard work. Making this wine needed everyone working together. Hard work with friends? Not so hard after all. <laughs> I'm... I'm so happy. Hmm. It makes us happy to see you happy. Thank you. Friends are also Lupacol. <laughs> Whether I'm human or I'm wolf, it doesn't matter. From now on, all of us are together. When I grow up, we will come back here and we will open this wine together. <laughs> what a magnificent monologue. Even as a bard, I don't feel like there's anything else to add. All that remains now is to bury the barrel and wait, wait for the fruit to ferment. We're finally done! Paimon feels like a celebration is in order! <laughs> um, if Paimon remembers correctly, tomorrow should be wind coming day, right? Wow! The animal god is coming home! <laughs> <laughs> That reminds me, I haven't memorized the song for the toasting ceremony yet. <laughs> I'd better get back. Friends, I shall see you all tomorrow. See ya, Venti. Get a good night's sleep tonight. Wait for the whisper of the gentle breeze to rouse you tomorrow morning. Then come and enjoy a performance by the greatest bard to ever grace the streets of Mondstadt. Wow, so many people have shown up to welcome the Animal Archive!
thing. Uh, huh? Why is everyone crowded around the angel share stand? Oh? Tradition holds that the finest wine of the Vinelesa Fest only goes on sale after the Animo Archon has tasted it at the toasting ceremony. Everyone's waiting in line for the big moment. <laughs> Ugh. So welcoming the Animo Archon back is just a means to an end for them, huh? What about you, Lisa? Are you here for Razor? Yes, I was feeling a little concerned about him, but I just spoke with him, and he tells me that the winemaking went very smoothly. Ah, <sighs> such a relief. A glass of the festival's finest will go down smoothly now, too. Wow, you too, huh? <laughs> Razor and the others are over there. You should go say hi. Hey, hey! There you are! Whoa! What's with all these bottles? Selling your own homebrew now? <laughs> <laughs> these are for Razor. From us. Oh. Mommy said that everyone's welcoming the animal god today, and we need to give him some wine. If the animal god likes the wine, he'll turn into the wind and bless everyone. We want the animal god to be happy, so he helps Razor. <laughs> oh, honorary knight! Look what Albedo let me borrow. Oh? This bottle is from my dad. Luckily, I managed not to break it on the way here. <laughs> uh, it's just for show, though. I have to give it back to them afterwards. <laughs> Mommy said that the animal god can drink a lot of wine. She said... If he wanted to, he could drink the whole of Cider Lake in one big gulp. <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't wonder if he really could do that. So, do you think we'd have enough between these and the wine raiser's parents left behind? Oh, I'm sure the animal archon will be pretty pleased with all this, all these beverages. Ah, Green Bard. Ah. Uh -uh. Everyone, I am greatly honored to be able to be here today. I have been invited by Acting Grandmaster Jean of the Knights of Avonius to perform a piece for everyone. Thousand Wind Wine. It is some of the finest verse I know. I dedicate it to the wind and to everyone here with us today. Fill up the barrels and store them away Then wait, wait for a windier day Wax the bottles, seal them tight For the south wind that soothes, for the north wind that bites How does this fine wine taste to the tongue As Mondstadt to the ear like a sweet dream of freedom And what are the fruits that went into the brew An explorer's courage, a love tender and true a defender's will, strong as yesteryear Joining the thousand winds in a song of good cheer Turning sour into sweet, bitter notes fade away As we wait, wait for a windier day Pray tell, what treasure does this barrel hold? Tis wheat's greatest triumph, the true liquid gold. As it flows from the keg, what sound drifts by? Wind chimes in the boundless immemorial sky. We raise up our glasses and voices in song as we wait. Wait for the wind to sing along. Where do we turn once the thousand winds take flight? To the tales of the lyre, to the sweet dream of tonight. Dear friends, let us now open the wines. Whoa, nice, Vandy. To the animal archon. <laughs> to the animal archon. Um... There's no wind. Aww. Don't feel sad, Clee. But why didn't he come? If the animal god didn't come home, is it because he doesn't like the wine we brought for him? <laughs> I don't think so. Of course not. You know, Clee, the wind isn't the only form that the animal archon can turn into. 
he can turn into anything. So today, he must have come back looking like something else. Huh? Really? Maybe he turned into a Chumpy Dumpty. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Sure, Chumpy Dumpty it is. Hope you're listening, Animal Archon. <laughs> Racer, did the Animal Archon bring you a blessing? Yes. I talked a lot with you all, and I learned a lot. Now, I am not afraid. <laughs> Good. I think that is a blessing. Don't forget to save me a glass of your wine once it's finished fermenting. <laughs> Will I get some too? Yes. We share together, and we remember together. Yay! <laughs> Oh, let's get please some juice. We've all done a lot of talking. Let's go get something to drink, shall we? I heard that the Angel Share is selling a new drink called Fruits of the Festival. Everyone's saying it's delicious. <gasps> I want some! I want some! <laughs> okay, everyone. Let's go. Oh. Take this, crush it, and place it on the fracture. Listen, Missy. Promise me you'll live on. This is where you must stay. You are our only hope. Forgive me, Kaya. Very good. That's my boy. I will always be proud of you. <sighs> After all the time we spent on it, the wine still isn't ready. <laughs> May as well leave it for our son. Razor. What do you think of that name? Oh, an adventurer's name. Yes. I like it. Razor! Razor! Come on!